Yes, guys. Hello, hello, hello. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes, guys. Hold on. Oh, this coming straight, bro. This isn't gonna come straight, guys. Hey, guys, and welcome to tonight's episode of Pray Like You're Mad. We are talking about once saved, always saved, part two, guys. If you missed the first one, so I'm just gonna put it straight here. Um, I am streaming both from my Pray Like You're Mad account and also my little Black Bell account. I want you guys to know. Listen, I'm a Christian. I <laughs> keep 100 for percent trail, okay? Um, and so I'm using this opportunity to really kind of speak to you guys uh, about Christ Jesus um, and let you know um, about how great he is and how good he is, all right? So tonight's episode, if you came for a relationship segment, this is a God segment. This is a Jesus segment. This is all about Christ segment, okay? And we're talking today about once saved, always saved. If you guys were here last week, I broke some stuff down. Uh, we went for two and a half hours. Tonight, we're not going to go that long. We're going to go probably about an hour and a half, okay? Uh, but tonight, we are talking about once saved saved always saved part two but i have a special guest with me today i'm not by myself okay um i'm with a, a special friend of mine kyle who will be joining us in a second or two and so um i really want to just encourage you guys who have joined us tonight i want to thank you for coming through first of all um because you know every time we gather together as saints it doesn't have to be in four walls okay it doesn't have to be within the confinements of a, a localized church that you see it, it, you know with mortar and brick but when you've gathered here you've come to church okay so maybe you don't like going to conventional church Maybe you don't like going into the four walls. Maybe you think you'll burn if you enter a full church. Today, you can sit in the comfort of your own home with your handheld devices or your laptop or, you know, whatever you've got to watch us today. And you're going to be blessed. I can promise that you're going to be blessed because we're going to turn some things inside out. We're going to ask some real questions because I believe that as Christians, we need to know the finished works of Christ and what that means for me and that means for yourself. So tonight, you're going to learn some things about Christ. You're going to learn some things about your walk. You're going to learn some things about your faith. You're going to learn some things about your relationship with God okay um and so you know first of all let me pray uh let me pray for you guys um and and and, and we'll, we'll kick off the 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 session today father we thank you in the name of jesus oh god we're praying that lord anybody who hears your word the bible says shall go forth and not come back void father we pray that lord anybody who has set themselves to come in today to hear about the word of god lord they shall be blessed lord they shall have a renewal of mind lord they shall see things differently it shall open them lord to a different verse a different level of understanding father give them an aptitude and an attitude and give them lord a determination to seek out your knowledge the Bible says, seek um, the kingdom, uh, seek the kingdom and his righteousness, Lord, and all other things shall be added unto us, O God. And so, Father, I'm praying that your children are adamant and searching for you. They want more of you, God. They want more of you. And Father, we pray for hungry hearts and hungry mouths. Yes. Um, so, yes, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Let me get some water. Stay hydrated. Even on pray like a man. Okay. So. Guys, do me a favor. If you haven't already, 
if you haven't already, I've put Little Blackbook here, but it's the wrong name. If you haven't already, I need you guys, okay, to follow this channel. Pray like you're mad, okay? That's the Christian channel, okay? I'm just doing a few lives on my Little Blackbook to kind of get the, the traction going. But, you know, I want you guys to follow our new YouTube channel, Pray Like You're Mad. This is all Christian content um, that we're putting out there to encourage you in your walk, in your faith. For many of you, you might feel like you've kind of, you maybe you felt like you strayed away from God. Maybe you felt like, you know what, you were Christian when you were younger. Now you're older, you're not really on it. That's fine. Listen, I've got a channel for you, okay? I want to encourage you. I want to teach you. I want to be able to have conversations with you. That's what Pray Like You're Mad is all about, okay? And so we want to encourage other people to foster their relationship with God and strengthen it, okay? So um, please do follow our YouTube channel, Pray Like You're Mad. If you haven't done it already, go on there, like it, share, subscribe to that channel. Um, get yourselves involved in that good stuff as well. But tonight, I am joined by a brother. If you guys have been watching my lives last year i was in a lot of lives with this brother you know he talked to a lot some deep stuff unlocking and then unhinging some things you understand yeah and causing mis mis mischief and mayhem in the atmosphere and i like that you know what i'm saying cheers zara thank you very much for that so i appreciate you for putting a link in there as well um you know and he, he caused he causes some some mischief and mayhem and i like that you know what I'm saying? is my hand right yeah my hand right don't worry about that anyway listen um <laughs> the anointing of god will will bless these hands um so uh yes i'm gonna without further ado i want to bring this blessed brother to the screen okay and i want you to pin back your ears get your pen and pen pen and paper out get ready to study because that's what we do on this channel you understand all right, man. Uh, warm welcome to my brother, Kyle, baby. What are you saying, bro? I'm good, my man. It's been a while. It has been a while, bro. It's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while, man. How you been, man? Yeah, not too bad. Doing as best as I can do with all this stuff that's happening. But uh, yeah, man, just trusting Jesus, keeping him knowing that he's still on the throne. Amen. Um, uh, yeah, not worrying about a thing, man. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I love to hear that. I love to hear that. Um, today we're talking about obviously once saved, always saved. Um, you know, this is a very delicate topic um, because I think always uh, whenever we have these kind of conversations, many people do have very valid questions about if we are once saved, always saved. You know, how can that be? Because there are certain things like if I was to be saved and I know I'm saved, you know, would, would I would I not continue sinning? What's to stop me from continue to go continue sinning? What's to stop me from going back to where I was before? You know, uh, if, if I'm always saved, you know, then I can take advantage of God. There's just so many different things that people can come up with in terms of questions as to why once saved, always saved doesn't really really work or for them as an abuse or hyper grace for them in fact it's actually sometimes termed as the doctrine of devils yeah you hear this term like once saved always saved is the doctrine of devils um but today we want to break it down we want to discuss it and we want to we want to introduce something uh, for people to understand and and and, and deep it so yes Carl, Carl, when i say once saved always saved, what do you think i mean what do you what do you perceive that to be uh so once saved, always saved. um for me i perceive that as the gospel um that it's it's a, a guarantee of a trust in Christ in the finished work. And it means finished work. Um, so no matter what we do, no matter how we do, Christ has done everything for us. So, you know, we have nothing to worry about. Um, I think the, even the idea that you have to question uh, once saved, always saved, kind of worries me. And mm. To be honest, I think for me, I, I've been on both sides of the fence with this. I used to, years ago, I used to fear about this. I used to fear, oh, if I do this, if I keep doing that, you know, and then I'll hear certain passages being thrown, you know, quoted at me, and that'll get me more shook up. And I just didn't have assurance, just did not have assurance because it my salvation remained and contained about me. Um, and so I was always looking at me to make sure that I was truly saved or if I was truly going to make it. Um, so now, now that I've come to understand a lot more, um, it's actually mostly the opposite direction. But actually, no, it's not about me. It's about Jesus. And if he's done everything, then, yeah, I'm, I'm peaceful with that. I'm good. <laughs> that makes sense. <coughs> Oh, you got issue with yourself, man. 
<laughs> my bad yeah I put, uh, I, put, <laughs> I put myself on mute um so you're saying for you once upon a time you when you um you were fearing your 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 salvation would be lost in a sense is that what you're trying to say like at a point in time you felt like hey you know <laughs> i'm gonna lose this today uh, uh due to due to me making a mistake or mm. i shouldn't say mistake knowingly doing something wrong let me put it that way because mistake <laughs> sounds good when you you knowingly sinned yeah you knowingly did some wrong you know what i mean um you felt like your salvation would be lost okay cool so uh, so it, you know it, it, since we've gone on that line you you know there's a there's a thing that someone might say which to open up the kind of conversation and let's get deep with it and get the scriptures going is that someone might say well well if you if that's the case you can be saved then at all times then what are you saying uh, uh, what what if someone dies in their sin when someone says that what do you what do you what do you, think, what do you make of that um well i think there's two problems with that one it's that um if if you're say dying in your sin as a christian it's not possible um, mm. you, know, you, you were once in adam and you was in sin but now mm. you're in christ so you can't die in sin um mm. you, you i think that the premise is the idea that we get this belief system that if we do what we do, oh, Jesus has saved us, so I can do what I want. When scripture actually teaches the very opposite mm. and says, I think I'm not, can't quote me on this, but it's in First Peter somewhere where it talks about, um, you know, we've been saved basically freedom, not don't use your freedom to do evil. Um, so you can choose as a Christian to do evil if you want to. But even the idea of that concept of you want to, if you're Christian, you don't want to. Mm. So I think as Christians, when we struggle with sin or we're having struggle with temptation, the reason we're struggling with it is because that's not our makeup anymore. Mm. Our DNA has been changed. So we struggle because we it's not what we want to do. Mm. Um, great example. Uh, I think it's Galatians 5 where it talks about the flesh warring against the spirit. Yeah, Ironically, awesome. the spirit is not warring against the flesh, which is quite interesting. And then it says so that you may not do the things you want to do. Well, what's the things you want to do? If you understand your identity, you realize you want to do the things of God, not the things of the flesh. Mm. So the flesh is actually trying to war against you to do the very things that you're meant to do or being called to, made for, if that makes sense. Ah, oh, there you are. That's it. Uh, which one's that? First bit of two. That's the one. Um, so, yeah, there is free people. Not use your freedom as a cover up for you or live as God's slaves. Um, if I may, there's another scripture. Uh, first to, uh, Titus chapter two. Uh, I think it's 10 to 13, if it has it up on there. Um, okay for you. Was it Titus what? Titus 2. Okay, cool. 12 to 13, I believe it is. Um, when I first read the scripture, you know, it's just times you're reading the Bible and you're like, yeah, I read it. But then he actually kicks you one day, like, hold on a minute, fam, what the heck? Because um, they hear a lot of this hyper grace preaching that, oh, well, mm. if I'm saved and I can do whatever, you're going to give people a license to sin. The problem with that is, is whenever you you are doing fine without a license, what makes mm. you think now that you're saved you're going to do more sin? Mm. You know, and that was the argument Paul had to deal with in Corinth when he was like, "Sorry, we should continue to sin that grace may abound." God forbid! Mm. How come if you die to sin, live any any longer? If you're dead, why do you want to go back to the things you were ashamed of? Mm. Um, yeah. So Titus two uh, 11, 12, 13. 11, 12, 13. Um, Let me get it for you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I think it's one of the most powerful scriptures when you when you deep it because it kind of reverses the very idea of this grace of God. Um, mm. I think it's in Jude verse seven because obviously we know there's only one chapter. Um, it says false teachers come in to teach that the grace of God is for lasciviousness, so to sin, uh, which is the false grace of God. Uh, mm. Here we are, verse eleven. There we are. Verse eleven, yeah. Verse eleven to thirteen, yeah. yeah. So the true grace of God, Jude, the false teaching of grace in Jude is talking about these false teachers that come in to teach you uh, uh, of lasciviousness, which means to live sin free, like all in sin, just living out sin. But here the true grace of God is here in Titus 2. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, not some, but for mm. all. What are they doing? Some tra translations say teaching or training us to renounce mm. ungodliness and worldly passions mm. from their self-controlled, upright and godly lives in the present age. Now we stop there and we go, yeah, see, God's grace actually teaches us to go the opposite. But then what was also the purpose of Jesus coming, not just to forgive us of our sins, but verse mm -hmm. 13 and 14. 
waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify himself for a people for his own possession, who are zealous for good works. Mm. And that matches up with Ephesians 1, where it says we've been made for good works. Yep. Not to get saved by doing good works. We've been made for them. So he not only came to forgive us of our sins, but he came to renew us and save us from the very sins that are damaging us mm. and set us free from those things that used to hold us captive. I love that. I love that. And I think um, just on your point as well is that, um, and I think we'll, we can even go to uh, Romans 6, just to break the, the thing real quick, because I think, um, you know, many, many, many people, like you said, are, are, will be quoting saying this is hyper grace. Um, and <laughs> it's like, uh, the question, for instance, the question we're asking at the moment is, um, what if I die in my sins? Um, and I think you mentioned it, okay? Um, and I want to read, it's Romans 6 here. Uh, so Romans 6 kind of speaks to about, obviously, how we how we deal with sin within the grace and how that works. And, and Paul is somebody who is, like, he's a warrior. He likes debates. This guy <laughs> writes scripture as if he's actually... In fact, not even actually as, as if he is counteracting a thought that may come. He's already preempting a certain thought. That's what Romans 6 begins with. And then he goes, what shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? You know, mm. by no means. How can we who died to sin live in it? And I think this is a key perspective that people don't understand at the moment. Let me bring it back to us two here. Uh, and we'll go back to Romans 6 in a second. I think one of the things that people don't really fully understand is they're dead to sin. They, they don't realize that. They, they, they think, that, and the reason why I believe that is because we're not taught that. What you're taught is that Christ died for my sins, and that's where the buck stops. There isn't enough teaching that goes beyond that. So then we get questions of saying, oh, um, well, if I continue sinning, then I'm going to die. I'm going to, uh, if I die in my sins, it's like, no, but you are dead to sin already. You're not in that state anymore to be alive to it. And I guess always that question that naturally comes, and we can answer this in a second, is, well, then if I'm dead to sin, how come I'm still sinning? And we can answer that a little bit later on. But, you know, so so I want you to understand, anybody listening to this, because I know some people are going to be like, once saved is always saved, it's, it's a wrong um, theology, etc. And I'm trying to get you to understand, do you know what you are? Like, the title Christian, it's not enough. <laughs> if you stay at the title Christian, it's not enough. What do I mean by that? There is a depth to understanding here. You're only at the tip. Go deeper. Go deeper. And go deeper again. The Bible lets us very clearly know in Romans 6 that, listen, he said, he already preempted our questions. If grace is really all of this that you're saying it is in a bag of chips, I'm letting you know ahead of time, you no longer are alive to this thing. Right? You're no longer alive to it, bro. Do you want to continue on anyway, bro? Uh, no, just to, just to highlight, I think we were having a discussion about this earlier. Um, for those who don't know, I was actually watching actually watching a sermon on this i was quite dumbfounded by it um it was talking about romans 6 to romans 8. Mm. Uh, for people that don't know every time we see the word sin in the bible we automatically think of sinning mm. um and i think a highlight point to know is that uh, i think it's romans 6 alone is sin is mentioned 48 times and only eight times is it described as a verb so a doing word, whereas a noun, it's like, you know, obviously object, place, thing. And even in this Romans 6 verse 1, where it says, mm. shall we continue to sin that the grace may abound? God forbid, how can we live? Die, uh, live? By no means, how can we die to sin living in it? Now, that word sin there in verse 1 is a noun. It's described as a, a position or a thing that's been removed from us. Mm. So even if we wanted to live in sin, we couldn't because it's gone. Mm. Um, it's another reference as, like, to the old man that, you know, we crucified the old man. You've been made new. You died to self. Now you've been made new. You're born again. You're a new creation. The old man is gone. Mm. Um, but I think the struggle when it comes to struggling, like living in sin and what have you, is the misunderstanding of what sin is and how it operates Ooh, compared okay. to the mix of, oh, I've got this sinful nature and I've got this... Uh, christian nature in me i want to be out i'm fighting or which one to obey do i obey this wolf do what do i feed and that's the wrong answer mm. you know um if we're dead to sin 
then you get the capacity to be able to do it. It's not the willingness to want to, um, it's not the willingness that I don't get to sin. Mm. It's the willingness of the freedom, nothing have to give in to sin. Mm. I think that's the real issue. Like you just said, when you know who you are and you know your standard and you know you've been made holy, sin is below you. Mm. So when you don't know who you are, you tend to give in to sin because you think you're a sinner, wretched mm. and evil. And that's the problem. That's where we go and sink down below ourselves. Mm. Uh, so when we do give into sin, we feel condemned and guilt and shame. Why? Because it's not part of us anymore. Mm. Before, we didn't have a problem doing it. You know? We were looking for new places, new things to do. Mm. Sin will no longer satisfy you now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think as I, 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 so I'm seeing a, a comment here, and I think I want to bring it up so we can discuss it a little bit. So I want it to be a little bit more interactive, mm-hmm. um, and then kind of just get, get so we can answer it, so they can actually get a full understanding of what we're talking about. So the uh, kind of uh, statement that was here made by Geraldine Young, I really appreciate this as well, Geraldine. We're here to to answer questions as well, we're not here to bash anyone. We want to be able to explain and break things down for you. Um, so she, the person's put here. I do think that it's very double minded how we think of God and his grace we want him to take things that we would never tolerate in a relationship like like we can treat him anyway with no effect to him um <laughs> and since it's a relationship question i love it so i want to i want to i want to i want to hit it straight who here okay who here has lived a relationship with christ that they themselves if they had a relationship with a human being would be exception of that relationship there is not one of you, any of you, that have a relationship with Christ that you would accept if it was a human being. If that's the case, we'd all be disqualified. You lie, you cheat, you steal, and you're born again, and you do these things. You've lied, you've cheated, you've stealed, you've fornicated, you're, some of us, you've, you've committed adultery, some of you take God's name in vain. So, like You'd be cancelled from this relationship if it was you. In fact, you'd call it an, an abusive relationship. If you, were, you and I were to have our way to say that grace only goes to a certain point, you'd all be disqualified because all of you are abusers. You take advantage. You do sin when you want to do sin. You do it willfully. It's not, it wasn't a mistake. No, no, no. It wasn't a mistake. You willfully did it. Yeah. When you went into, when, when you went into that shop and stole the chocolate bar, you willfully did it. Yeah. When you took, when you, when you streamed that film and, da- and downloaded it and you knew it was illegal, you did it on purpose. It wasn't a mistake. Many of us, if not all, if I say all of us, are in abusive relationships with Christ, if you're going to call it that. If you really were to take grace as a human aspect, that's why it's grace. It's not merited. You don't deserve it. And none of you are good enough to say, hey, my, my actions, my actions are, 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 are brilliant for Christ in the relationship I have. You know what I'm saying? Like we'd all be cancelled because all of us would have taken advantage of Christ from the very day dot. Uh, but I don't know if you want to add on to that, bro, a bit more. Uh, than that. Oh, I think just what you just shared, and thanks for the comment. Uh, appreciate that. And anybody else, please do comment, ask questions. I think one of the key thoughts that came to my mind just now with regards to this is the prodigal son um, mm. and the father. We, we, we make it about the son, but not about the father. Mm. And yet the, the prodigal son was the one who realized, man, I'm messed up. I need you. Mm. Um, whereas the religious one was like, well, I deserve this inheritance. Look at all the good mm. I'm doing. Um, and sometimes we don't realize it with all good intentions. We end up having more of that Pharisee mindset of, well, I've been doing the good things. I've been keeping the rules of the book. So therefore I deserve such and such. Um, and that's the misunderstanding. We end up taking the religious mindset of earning God's acceptance, earning God's love and doing it with our behavior. Oh, well, God, you know, I didn't cuss this week. I didn't steal this week. But, you know, I did this good deed and this did good deed. Will you bless me? Mm. And that's not how God rolls. I think we, we treat God like a um, we treat God like a pagan, if you mm. will. Uh, you see a lot of the pagan religions, they, they will cut themselves and torture themselves, do all crazy stuff, shouting and screaming for God to move. Mm. But God doesn't work like that. He, he, he is love itself. And I think the very misuse, and you mentioned something earlier about abusive relationship. I think for those who uh, have had bad relationships with people or when they've treated us, we can end up putting that on God mm. and paint the image of that's what God is like. Mm. And the misunderstanding of that, yes, we do misuse the grace. Like you said, if it wasn't misused, it wouldn't be grace. Mm. Um, but that's going to happen. But yet 
God still chooses to call us his beloved. So be loved. <laughs> mm. um, God loves us despite whether we meet the standard. I mean, j- just a great example, um, if I may. <clears throat> go for it. Yeah, go for it. Um, when God gives the Ten Commandments, I know Christians are very heavy on the Ten Commandments. You must do mm. this, don't do this, blah, blah, blah. Um, but then what I find ironic is as soon as God's given the Ten Commandments, straight after, he then gives the law for sacrifice. Mm-hmm. I never caught on to that until recently. That's true because he knows that they're not going to be able to do it. Mm. So he provided a sacrifice mm. knowing he, they're not going to be able to keep up with it, mm. um, which makes the, the death of Jesus even more amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I honestly, to fully grasp our father and to know mm. that he loves us and we're his children, he knows when he took us on, when we said, yes, Jesus, I, you know, I accept you, um, I, want to, I want to be yours. He knew what he was going to get with you. He knew all the mistakes you're going to make, all the rebellion, all the choice to say, I'm not going to listen, I'm doing my own thing. He knew all that, but he still chose to give it anyway. Mm. And that that bit just blows our mind because we're not used to that. Human relationship yeah, work, doesn't work like that. It don't work. Um, it, I think a lot of us, if we did, people say, well, if you do that, you're going to be walked all over. That's what happened to Jesus. That's what, yeah. He was loving Karna and they treated him like trash. Mm. And so it, it's, it's, it's having that hard conception that I have to know that no matter what I do, right or wrong, the reason mm. I'm doing wrong is because I'm not learning who I am yet. And mm-hmm. the more I learn who I am, the less I'll be behaving like that because I'm yeah. realizing, hold on, I'm a child of God, I'm loved by God, and I'm an ambassador for Christ. And that's a lifetime's journey, you know? But I think sometimes we have so much expectations and we believe our own mor- morality, our own hype, that we're more moral mm. than we think we are. Mm, 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 and when mm, we don't yeah. meet those expectations, we start thinking, oh, well, am I really a Christian? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, we got a message here. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, it's because I'm reading some of the messages on the, in, the, in the chat. I think also as well. Uh, let me. That, that was good. Actually, let me get the um, question. I want. There was a question that was asked by Jess. That was really, really good as well. Um, I want to get that up so we can address it because it was. It was I do like that statement though, or at least I said it's true. Yeah, it's, it's a good statement. Uh, sorry, <laughs> where is Jess's question? I've just lost Jess's question. Um, but it was talking about, yeah, here we go. So, um, so, uh, so are you saying there's a difference between having a sinful predisposition and committing sin? I had to look up the word predisposition because I, I'm not gonna lie to you. I, can, I, can, I, can, I, can, I was like, the Eng- I was struggling with the English. Um, but yeah, I don't know if you want to answer that. Um, predisposition. So like an, uh, an, uh, a state. So yeah, precious is a liability or a tendency to suffer from a particular condition, hold a particular attitude, or act in a particular way. For instance, a child may inherit a predisposition to schizophrenia. Wow, that's an interesting example. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, I think everyone in this in this world that's been born into this world has all become part of a predisposition mm. um, because sin has. I think the Romans five talks about. When Adam sinned, sin entered the world. Um, sin is very opposite to humanity. Mm. Uh, a great example of, uh, I think I mentioned this earlier, about Genesis, when God, mm. when Cain was wanting to kill, uh, Ad, I was say Adam then, when God wanted to kill Abel, he mm. said, sin is crouching at your door. Yeah. Do not obey him. You rule over it. Or in Hebrew, it's him rather than it. Mm. So he separated the person between sin. So when sin entered, it affected the whole of humanity, it affected the whole of creation. So when man is born into this world, they're born upright, I believe. I believe they're born morally upright because we're made in God's image. But we are unfortunately going to be influenced by Satan, by principalities and by sin itself that's going to corrupt Mm. the choices that we have. And so when we grow up, we're naturally engulfed into that predisposition. Mm. But I think it's then when we face that situation, we then choose if we're going to give in mm. to that sin, if that yeah. makes sense. Because mm. if you look, you just look in general, right, most people, it's that whole nature, nurture stuff and whatever you, but you see a lot of people, like if you offered me drugs or whatever, I'm, I'm not predispositioned to like it because I'm mm. just, I'm not involved in that. So it's not tempting to me. 
for somebody else who's been brought up in certain environments, it's going to be more of a predetermined decision for them because mm. they've been brought up in that environment. Um, so that would be my kind of take on that anyway. Um, that we're all yeah. prone to it, but um, I think it's about what we do and choose to do when we're faced with it. So um, I also want to just go back to scripture again because I really want to bear in yeah. mind because of what I don't want it to do. Because yeah, I, I know we know, but sometimes what happens is people think because we're just giving our opinion, it's an opinion, but oh, it's because yeah. we're, it's because our minds already consider scripture already. So um, yeah. even continuing on with Romans six, um, if we look at it, um, when it says from verse six, from verse six, it says, we know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. Okay, so we're 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 be it's it, the the typology. I should say the the imagery here is also very similar to what we see in Galatians, um, and also one in Colossians as well, where it says the sun is translating us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, and very much here it's using that same imagery of being enslaved, which is what we saw in the Old Testament with Egypt and Israel, very much that that bondage. So what it's letting us know very first of here in Romans six is then you know that we know that our old self, which we know is crucified already, because we saw that. The, the scripture where it talks about your old man is gone okay so now we're seeing we know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin and then it says for one who has died has been set free from sin now if we have died with christ we believe that we we'll also live with him we know that christ being raised from the dead we will never die again so let, look at that look at that listen here we know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But for the uh, but but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. So I want you to pay attention here. It's giving you a comparison between you and Christ. What Christ has done, you are doing too. So he's saying here that Christ being raised from the, being raised from the dead will never die again, right? So you, he, if, if Christ is never dying again and you are now dead to sin, you've been born again, you've dead to sin, then you too shall also be dead to sin and you will never die again. So the same, it's making that typology, well, I say typology, it's making that um, comparison between you and Christ because Christ is the first fruits of all things, so of those who have been raised from the dead. So you now are following in his footsteps. So once you have what he has, it is done because if you can lose it, then Christ can lose it because he's the one that, sat, he's the one that started it. That's, that's how deep it goes when we say you can lose your salvation. Because, what's, because Christ purchased this by being obedient unto death. And it's letting us know he's now dead to sin. And you two now are dead to sin. So if now you can lose it because you sinned, he too Christ. He too could have lost. He too could lose it hey, if he God. sinned. You know what I mean? Like it goes deep, bro. Go on, bro. Go on. Talk God, to me. There's so many levels to that. I mean, like, you know, he, he lives in heaven. He's seated in the throne in heaven and so are we we're seated with him it doesn't say we were or going to be we are now in heavenly places with him mm. already currently um but i think a key there in verse 11 which people miss and i think this is a lot of the reasons why we struggle with sin mm. um in verse 12 i think it is where it says now therefore consider yourself dead to sin it's something mm. you have to be reminded of mm. think about it. consider this you are dead i think i used a practical example earlier about you know, um, how if you ever try to sit into a chair that you're already seated in, it's, mm, it's very mm. difficult. Um, verse 12 is powerful. Where it says, do not let, yeah, do let not sin. By the way, that's a Greek word for hamartia. It's like a power or a force mm -hmm. working within the members of the body. Let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal body to make, to make you obey its passions. Mm. Hold mm. on. To make you obey its passions. Whose passions? The sin's ones, not yours. Mm. Um, we don't want to sin. And the the idea of it for an unbeliever, I just come quickly back to the question the sister asked earlier about yeah. the presupposition. An unbeliever is dead. It is uh, um, very well enslaved to sin. 
But I think Romans 8 talks about it, Romans 5, that we were once slaves of sin. Unbelievers, we didn't know anything different. We, we were dead, if you will. But then when we got born again, we've been made alive to God. And now we can we realize the fight. I don't know about you, mm-hmm. but when, before you got saved, was you having any struggle with sin? No, 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 bruv. But then when you get saved, you, something happened to you. Like, hold on a minute. This never happened before. I'm feeling this struggle. What's going on? Mm-hmm. You've been made alive. And now sin is like, no, I'm getting you back. Yeah. I want to win you over. Um, and that's where it's like, no, sin, you don't you don't operate me. You don't dominate me. I dominate you. Mm. you know, you're dead. Get out of here. Mm. You know? Um, I think we have to be careful as well. I know there's a question here, but I'm just going to uh, highlight this, is that we have to realize when we get a temptation or when we get yeah. a thought that comes to mind, like, oh, a thought comes, you'll be praying, and then you get a bad thought. Oh, how could I think that? It's not you. That's sin. Sin Ooh. has a way of infecting your mind. Say it's... that. Wait, say that again, bro, for them so to understand this. So that because this is the key part now, because we're going to say. It. So say that again. No, I'm saying that when we have a bad thought, for example, when we're praying, for example, and a bad thought comes to our mind, we if we're if we're not careful, we don't know who we are. We will automatically think that that's us. But sin has. I think the Bible talks about Romans eight, Romans six. That as a law working in our members, for it's not I who would do it, but sin living in me so sin has this way of knowing your tendencies it knows what to drive into your mind so it's it's almost like you get this bad thought and something in you is like well where'd that come from mm. it didn't come from you it came from sin and sin has its way of influencing that that hardware of yours you know um i like to use this example if i may is that um a great example of it is uh <laughs> someone described it like you go to a pc store right and you mm-hmm. buy a brand new PC. You think, oh, this is cool, man. You know, you turn the computer on. And as soon as you turn it on, you get software update. Mm. Software update. It's a brand new computer. <laughs> it's the same way when we got saved. God gave us the right hardware, but we've got a lot of software that needs updating. Our mind mm. needs renewing. And so every time a thought comes or a suggestion of temptation or sin, we have to show, uh-uh, we can choose... Yes, Jesus, I'm going to obey you, or no, I'm going to not update yet. And so we will keep going back to the same struggle, the same temptation. But when we keep choosing and allow the Holy Spirit to work in our minds and renew us, those things become less and less frequent because God is doing the work in you. Mm, I love that. I love that. So, uh, to your, uh, I lo- I won't go too deep with that. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I'll leave it there. I want to I I answer some questions for these guys. Yeah, so, ahead, so just a question ahead. that Q Comfort's put here. It, here is a question I have. How long do we keep talking or uh, taking God's grace for granted? Do y'all believe that God gets upset with us, not to say that he loves us any less? Uh, do you believe that God gets upset with us? Um, how long do we keep taking God's grace in, God's grace in vain? Every day. <laughs> Every day there's something that we are getting wrong, something we're not learning, a repeated pattern. Um, I think that I just want to highlight something key that's here. I know this may not be written in this question, Mm. but I think there's a difference between when we make a mistake, being God being angry with us and God being upset. Mm. Because I think we get this misconception that when we're doing, when we've committed a sin or we've chosen to give in to sin, bearing in mind what you said earlier, Kojo, that, uh, there's this thing, a potency to think that we are sinning without our will involved. Mm. Say, oh, you willfully sin. Tell me where your will wasn't involved when you sinned. Yep. <laughs> exactly what you're doing. Mm. So when we choose to do it, what we've done is we've suppressed the spirit. Mm. We've quenched the Holy Spirit. He wants to express himself through us. You know, I like what someone said the other day. Jesus died to give his life for us, to give his life to us, to live his life through us. Through us. Love that. So it's this constant, you know, um, and so I think the moment we realize when we sin, yes, God's not angry at us because yeah. any anger he had was dealt with at the cross. Yep. God's not got beef with you no more. Mm-hmm. You know, Romans 5, 1, therefore we've been justified by faith and we have peace with God. Mm. God will never be angry at us again. That's satisfied. Now, the point of it of when we make a mistake I would see it as like our, my, my dad, and when I say dad in this essence, I mean God. My dad would be like, son, ah, come on, up me get. Again, you can do it. 
not, oh, can you do this on my face? How could you? He's not shocked by what we do. Is he affected? Yes, because he's, he's not allowing himself to be expressed through you mm. in order to dominate and rule over that thing that you're, you're struggling with. Mm -hmm. And he's aware of your struggles. Um, so to say that he's upset, yeah, it may be disappointed, but he's not shocked when you make that choice. Mm. He's not angry at you when you do it, but he wants you to come boldly to the throne of grace to get help in time of need. Grace gives you help not to do those very things. Mm. But it's realizing that when you do make a mistake, you have a choice because when you do make a mistake, you have two voices. You have the enemy. No, you have three voices. You have the enemy that says, how could you do that? You call yourself a Christian. <laughs> like accusations, throwing mm -hmm. darts, fiery darts. Then you have your conscience. You feel guilty. You feel ashamed. And the Bible talks about in 1 John 4, I believe it is, or one of those talks about if our, if, if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts. And then there's the third voice, which is the Lord. Come on, get up. You know you can do better. Keep going. You feel this assurance that because sometimes what happens when we make mistakes, you confuse our conscience with God. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's that conception that when I mess up, God is angry at me. Or I'm feeling guilty. I need to show her and shame and hide. That's what Adam and Eve did. But God pursued them. Man mm -hmm. ran away. God never ran away from them. He went and chased them to embrace them when they messed up. I hope that helps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's, there's another question I want to, to t tackle into. Yes. Says, I have never, ever got a coherent answer for the once saved, always saved perspective with regards to the following scriptures, John 15, 6 and Revelation 22, 19. I can get that up. Um, cool. Yep. Go ahead. So, so I know John 15 is about the abide in me. Um, I'm the true yep. vine. So let me, let me. If it uh, is that one, I think I know a response to that. Uh, and... That used to bother me too. <laughs> Okay. So John fifteen six and Revelation twenty two nineteen. Yeah. Okay. It's written by the way with the same author. Yeah. Uh -huh. So there's a correlation that we have to take in mind that John the Apostle is not going to contradict himself. That's not right. We'll do John fifteen first. Okay, um, let's do this. <clears throat> so this is John fifteen verse six it says, "If anyone does not abide in, in fact, you know what I want to do? He said John fifteen six, but I want to go further up because Thank I was like to read a few I was just about to say that. <laughs> I'm gonna start from number one, okay? Because uh, I think that always helps to give us a better uh, understanding context. of scripture in context. Yeah. It says uh, John fifteen verse one says, "I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser." Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does not bear fruit, he prunes, that it may be that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he, he, uh, he it is that b bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask, your, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. We can go on, but that's John 15, verse 6. Um, I don't know if you want to tackle that, bro, first. Uh, yeah, I think there's two points of view on this. Uh, mm. One uh, is the understanding that, first of all, Jesus is talking to the Jews. Yeah. So if you look at, I think, is it Jeremiah or Isaiah? The branches mm. um, are the Israelites. And yeah. the vine dresser, the vine, is the father, is yeah. God. Um, so that's one. There's that, that way of looking at it. That's but also, well. too, as well, um, no one can bear fruit only by Jesus. So even as Christians, mm. bearing fruit of the Spirit, you can't bear any fruit. Mm. Now, this, this understanding of if you do not abide in me, some people interpret it, well, I need to make sure I pray. I need to do Bible study to keep myself abiding. Um, but actually, in the same passage, I think it's in First John, it says, he who abides, he who abides, it's another word for live, mm. who lives in him. He says, I live in him and God abides in him. Mm. The moment you believe in Jesus, he's always forever going to be abiding in you. Mm. It's a permanent state, you know. Um, so even like, so if I go to Texas, no matter whether I go to Texas or China, 
I'm always going to be British. No matter where I go, I'm still always abiding. My location may have changed, but my mm. permanency of my residency is always permanent. Mm. That makes sense. So in the same way when you give your life to Christ, when you believe on him, you now live in him and he lives in you. And that's a permanent position that never changes. Mm. Um, the branches that don't bear fruit are the ones that are obviously not, uh, not in him, who haven't received Christ. Mm -hmm. And so therefore there is no fruit to bear. That's why it gets thrown into the fire. Mm. I love that. I love that. And let, let me as well add to that. I think reading the scripture um, fully through as well, um, I think obviously it says, I'm the true vine and the father is the vine dresser. And I think that is the first and foremost start of things. Yep. that god is the one who is doing the business here okay he's the gardener all right so so he's saying listen look uh, jesus saying i'm the true vine the father is a vine dresser every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away and every branch that does bear fruit he prunes that it may bear more fruit already you are clean because of the word that i've spoken to you abide in me as i in you as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine neither can you unless you abide in me um and i think for me even just reading that scripture um it, i think it, it's i can see why someone may i can see why someone may take it to be in what well, uh, you know if, if some people are abiding and then they leave or some some people are branches and they're cut off and right correctly what i think you said there it's also scripture in i believe romans is it 13 or 11 i can't think where, where it talks about israel being gra uh, about us being grafted in um, you know, we, we, we were, we were, we're the branch that's been grafted in. And so the imagery here is that it's letting you know that obviously, first of all, he makes it very clear here that obviously apart from Christ, nothing can be done. Like if you, if you want, if you're talking about fruits, you want to see if that, if you're not in Christ, fruits can't be bad because that's the only way it's being done is that the Holy Spirit's in you. And he's the one, and the Bible, we can go to that scripture in a second with Philippians, where it talks about he's the one that's working in you. He's the one that's even willing you to even desire him. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's God doing it in you because you on your own naturally cannot, couldn't do it. So he's now put something in you that now resonates with his frequency. You know, it, you're, yeah. you're asking, you're asking for, for you as a human being to interpret microwaves and you don't have a receiver to interpret the microwaves. But then he puts his spirit in you and let's, I'm just putting as an analogy perspective, and let's say he starts speaking microwaves, you now have a receiver to understand microwaves. Do you understand? So without the spirit of God being in you, you're unable to bear fruit. What I would say, what I would say also is at the same time as well is that um, it's, it's so interesting because I think, and it's going to go, we'll go to Revelations 22 in the second frame as well um, to, to discuss that. So I, I would, when I, when I see abide, I would take it as, another aspect i would take it as when it says abide um this is spending quality time with god that's how i look at abide if i'm honest with you i look at abide as in spending quality time but i'm looking at it as in two formats the the original abide is the position that never changes so that's that's your relationship with god yeah when the bible says like for instance we are seated in heavenly places we have an inheritance we are sons of god these are permanent positions that don't change the prodigal son was always a son irrespective of whether he changed location right so that is one aspect of the abide it's that spiritual abide never changes but there's also we can say a more practical abide in the sense of the fact that we spend time with we spend time with God in terms of quality time, reading our word, praying, etc., etc. But if we were take it in its in its fullest context, the abide is that you have Christ in you because that is the lo that is the position that's locked in eternally, right? It's an eternal redemption. You are an eternal son of God. You have eternal. You have an inheritance that's eternal. Those things are red. Are res, how do we say? Uh, uh, are resolute. They are. They are sunken in and cannot be changed about you or I, irrespective of what you do. And and so it's it's it's, it's important to understand that because without the the branch on its own does nothing. Yeah. It is the vine that allows the branch to bear a fruit. Mm -hmm. So, so, so in a sense, you are just connected to something that allows you to bear the fruit. It's not you again. That's what it's letting us know. It's not you again. It, it is, it is, it is a vine that's determining the branch, yep. not the branch determining the vine. The fruit is determined by the vine, not the branch. You, you see, 
Yeah. But anyway, let me not go to deep. We're not going to deep. Uh, Revelation 32. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, that one I talked about, I, I in him and him in you, is uh, 1 John 4.13. Yes, I've got it up for you. I've got it up for you. Uh, what do you want to go? 1 John 4.13. 4, yeah. 13. Okay. Uh, yes. It says, uh, by this we know that we abide in him and he in us. So um, first of all, let's stop. <laughs> let's read line by line because it's, it's, it, listen by this we know that you and i abide in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit let's just let's let's, let's not go no further let's not go no further because that is no bro listen I'm, I'm laughing but this is this is what i'm saying like bro like when yeah. we read scripture this is the key parts of it bro yeah. when it's intertextualizing we got we got to get that scripture right so look you this line alone answers the question. By this, we know that we abide in him and he in us. So the, the question that was asked was about us abiding in God, right? And, 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 the, and the branches. This is how you know you abide, okay? You abide because we know that uh, we, we abide because he has given us his spirit. And yeah. we have seen and testified that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. But I'll leave it at the first line because that correlates with the scripture in uh, Ephesians where it talks about how the spirit is a seal. He is the guarantee of this inheritance and promise. So if the spirit is guaranteed as a promise and it's not leaving you ever, it's not forsaking you, it's not going nowhere, then you are eternally abiding. But go on, bro. That, that, that's a key. I think this back, backs up with Romans where it talks about he who does not have the spirit of Christ is none of his. So if you have the spirit of Christ in you, you're his. Um, I and mean, it just continues there. We have confessed that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. So we have come to know and believe in love that God has for us. God is love. And whoever abides in love abides in God and God abides in him. Um, I think that that confidence that we have the spirit of God, so what could... Uh, even that passage you just used about, you know, we're sealed with a promise. What's the promise? That we're going to be glorified one day. That's the promise. And the Spirit of God being there is knowing we're going to get adopted and become glorified. Mm. That's a guarantee. We just have to wait. We're already there. If some people say, oh, I wonder if I'm going to make it to heaven. The scripture says you're already there. Mm. You just wait for your body to catch up. <laughs> you mm. know, you're already there sitting there spiritually. You're already sitting there waiting. Um, yeah, it's going to be an exciting day. Anyway, go, go on, bro. You were saying uh, Revelation? Revelation 22, verse 19. I had to get up as well. Um, Same so author again. Take, <laughs> taking away, taking away the, that's taking away the um, Book of Life one, I believe. So let me just. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let me get there. Um, so, yes. Um, it says here, I warn everyone, I want to read from verse 18. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. Do you want to, <laughs> would you like to take that one or do you want me to? Well, I don't even have an answer that right now. Really? I, oh, I think one thing is key is I warn anyone who hears the word of the prophet of this book. Mm. So I'm talking about the Bible. We've got to remember the Bible has 66 books. Mm. So it's the book of Revelation itself already. That's one. Um, God will add to him the place to scram this book. No believer is going to experience the place of God, the judgment mm. of God. The judgment's already been dealt with. Um takes away from the words of this book, of this prophecy. Now, Revelation is a prophecy book. God will take his way, his share in the tree of life. Now, for me, I always find that a difficult one because on one side, what words are you talking about? Mm. So what do you do about commentaries when people make a commentary and they translate it and then they, they add uh, italics into it to kind of give an extra detail or a mm. footnote? Isn't that adding to the word? Mm. Isn't that taken away from the word? Mm. Do, do you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. So stuff like that, you can come with all sorts of different stuff with this one. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I, I don't think that would refer to a believer because, one, he wouldn't want to do that. Two, what do you mean take away from the words? In mm. what sense? Um, 
And yeah, and if that's the case, if it, it was to do to take away from that stuff in the book of Revelation, mm. then commentaries are banned. Mm. There are lots of salvation. <laughs> if you're going to mm. take away stuff and edit and be changing, it's a problem. But other than that, I don't know what, what else you can come with that without reading the whole chapter, but it's quite a long one. So. And I think a key word here is if anyone um, takes away from the words of the book, um, rather yeah. than saying a believer, so i was i'm always very careful with that so it, it, it's it's and if any so if anyone would take away from the words of the book of prophecy god will take away his share in the tree of life i think what confu what brings the confusion is the the fact that it says if anyone takes away from the words of the book of prophecy god will take away his share in the tree of life so there's an assumption that's quickly made that oh they've already got, they've already got a inheritance in the tree of life so this must be the believer but actually if you read it again it says if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy god will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city it does not mean that person's a believer and they already have a share already. He said he will take it away. That person may not have a share in that already. That's not what it's saying. You know what I mean? So um, it, it's almost it's almost like as if it's almost like um, I don't know how to describe this. Almost like similar to um, we do the exact same thing almost with how do we how do I say this? Um, I, I was trying to think of an example to kind of bring it a bit more down to, to earth so the person would understand because sometimes reading it in this context can be a little bit difficult but what i'm what i'm trying to say is that that thing says if anyone takes away from the words of the book and yep. it's letting you know it's not said that you, that person already has an inheritance it's not said that person already is the tree of life it's not said yep. that it, it, do you know what i'm saying so it's in it's an, it's we're almost kind of projecting onto the the scripture to say that this could this could be this is a, if this is a believer has done this but i think what we said very very clearly as well which is i would say this as well is that if you're a believer truly a believer why yeah. would you purposely try to take scripture out anyway that's true you wouldn't want to <laughs> the spirit of god is working in you to do you know what i mean like so why yeah. would the believer try to do that what mm -hmm. what would be the reason behind that again you know what i mean it's like the true believer, why would he want to do that to 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 remove scripture from the thing? Do you know what I'm saying? And like you said very, very clearly, we have translations. Let's let's keep hunting true. We have translations. We have NIV, which takes out certain scripture. We have <laughs> we have certain uh, we have we have battles and wars um in, in, in translations whether a manuscript is should be added or not added. And so you see an asterisk in your Bible where it says uh, may not be in the original manuscript or the Greek or this may not be in this particular scripture. So I, I think very I'm, I'm very careful about that because, like I said, what believer would want to in, try to take scripture out and say this is not it? Do you know what I mean? And yeah. if that's the case, there's, there's some people out here definitely going to. Um, yeah, that, honestly, that used to fear me back in the day because I'll be writing notes and I'll be writing a scripture and then writing my, my understanding of it and thinking, Oh, am I taking away from the... And I'll scrub it out, you know? It's just... Yeah. Of <laughs> course, mm. anyone know that's uh, answered in any way? Anyone want to say any comments or questions? Let's have a few more. I think there was... Um, uh, sorry. So I think Gabriel is not satisfied with that answer. So he said, I'm sorry, that's biblical Higgy Hagar. It's clear what Revelation 22 is saying. You can't take away something you don't have. But it doesn't. Okay, so let me put it again. Read it again. This is why I ask people to read. Read mm. it again. If anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city. He hasn't said it's a believer. It's almost like when we read First Corinthians six and we extrapolate from the thing where it says uh, um, the unrighteous. These are these are the uh, what the right, unrighteous do. And we go see that's what Christians Christians are going to hell because look what it says. If you're fornicate, if you're a thingy, and read if you read the scripture very clearly. If anyone takes away from the words of this book of his prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and the holy city. It hasn't it, it hasn't made a case for a believer. It's just said if anyone does this, do you understand? So it, it hasn't said it's a believer. It's you know what I mean? Like you, you not transacted it. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm trying to make it clear because obviously I, I, don't, I don't want it to be missed. Like we're trying to, I'm not trying to dodge it. it. If you look at the scripture, it says if anyone does this, yeah, then their share will be taken away from it. It hasn't said they have it. It, it doesn't say that they had the share. He just said they would take their share away from it. Just like he said, uh, uh, like the scripture might say, obviously, um, for instance, our... Uh, uh, they like god might say um uh their name's not in the book of life and someone might say well see your name was in the book of life and he rubbed it out but 
I think sometimes we have to understand that when God is trying to get, create an imagery for you, this be it. But here, I wouldn't, I w personally, I wouldn't extrapolate this to being that a believer can lose their salvation because yeah. of them taking out scripture. And I, I, again, I, I presuppose that with the fact that, number one, it's I believe like, everybody do that. Go for it, bro. It's like, if I may, just use a practical example, imagine if this is a, a football. Mm. Yeah, you like to take it? Mm -hmm. Should I take it? I'll take it. <laughs> now, I've given you the opportunity to play ball. Mm. But if I take it away from you, you've got no opportunity to play ball. I've given mm. you the opportunity to take it. But I've chosen not to give it to you. Mm. You've not accepted. So I'm, you took, I've took away the opportunity. So the opportunity was given to you, but I'm not given the option to be able to play. Mm. Um because you've done something that refuses and doesn't allow you to take it. So you can't partake in the football match because mm. I'm not giving you the ball. Um, so taking away a share. So the share is there. It's advertised. Yo, this is what you will get if you receive this transaction. But if you don't take the transaction, you're not going to get the share. So I'm mm. taking away the share from you. Mm. doesn't mean that the, the share is invalid or that it's been transacted. It's just been there offered to you. But if you do this, you just haven't took it if that makes any sense it's just a kind of random example but <laughs> I, hear that. I hear that well obviously if uh maybe gabriel we can have a little catch up after in it so gabriel we can have a little catch maybe we can have a little catch up after um and have a conversation so gabriel send me a little um email um I i'll send you a little email i don't mind having a conversation after bro uh, and getting a little chat chat because I like to answer questions. I don't like to be off point. So um, send me a little email. I'll put that across. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, no, I don't want, I don't want it to be like, I'm not, I don't dodge. So um, I wanted to be able to do that. So let me just put my email up there so you can see that um, as well. So just send me a little email, Gabrielle, and, and we'll talk after. I'll answer some more questions. Uh, once my screen starts spinning around. Okay. Um, what was the other questions that came up? Uh, Okay, so uh, see what the others are saying because I think there's a couple of points that I uh, I, I took note from earlier that okay, go for it, bro. the reasons why a lot of people just seem to not believe this once saved, always saved. Okay, go for it. But um, if there's any other questions, uh, let's have a look. Uh, I want to try and get more people involved rather than just being taught at. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't want to. Okay, um, finished, was he elect or not? I thought that's a question towards us. I don't know if any other questions on it. Do you guys have any more questions? Otherwise, I'll, we can teach it. I it's not a problem at all. Uh, oh, Gabriel says, Gabriel says you got his uh, details. I don't know. Do you know? You might know him. So I don't know. I do um, know. Yeah, you got his details. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you have any more like, questions, you know, guys. Like, I'll <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if you have any more questions. Okay, so okay, so let's actually let's 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 stick with this premise, yeah? Let's stick with this premise. Actually, let's not go away from it. Let's stick with his Revelation twenty two premise and work it out as to what that would mean for a believer to lose their salvation at that point. And and work it that way. Right? Because when because the reason why we're 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 presupposing the way that we are is because we have a, a, a structure of thinking already that's built around that. So if we take that structure um and say okay cool um for so that that scripture in revelation 22 if a if a christian can take words out of the book out of the book and lose their salvation what would be what would that mean for us as christians that's how i'd put it so if if a person can lose their salvation due to revelation 22 19 them taking scripture out of the the book per se what would that mean well, I think the difficulty with a, with, a, with a scripture like that is that if this was something so serious that doing this one thing could cost you eternity, if it's talking to a Christian, mm. I think it would be something that would be brought up more than once in the Bible. Mm. Um, if it, I mean, just trying, to con just trying to interpret or understand that, okay, Jesus has died for us, for all of our sins. He's paid for every immoral act that we would ever do. But if I take away some of the verses in this book, I'm finished. I don't know. It just seems a bit far fetched for me. Mm. Um, so I think there's got to be. I think they call it in biblical um, um, biblical interpretation a uh, hapax, um, mm. where it's when you see this what, a scripture that's only mentioned one time. Um, it's not. It's not. Well, it's very dangerous to take one verse and make a whole doctrine out of it. Mm. We want to see what the whole counsel of God says. 
Um, and there's nothing else in the Bible that I can see that, that kind of hints at anything like this. Um, mm. So I think it's, firstly, one the revelations it talks about, the plagues that are being poured out are for those who are not believers. Um, no believers experience these plagues. I don't mm. think, anyway, from my understanding, because um, God's judgment has been paid for. So there's no judgment to be poured at. Um, so anyone who's going to be taking these books are going to receive the plates. Um, but yeah, that, that's my fault. I just don't think there's another biblical premise to come to that conclusion. Mm. Okay, cool. So I think, I think for, um, um, I think for me, and I'm going to, uh, Maria's got a question in a second, so we're going to answer that as well. I think for me to, to, to understand. So the, the reason why I looked at the scripture revelations 22 verse 19 in the way that I did is because if as long as I really need help, um, because um, if 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 that is like you said, if that is if that is the reason how we can sit, if that's the reason how we can lose our salvation, then truly again I, I put that premise that then intentionally um, that Christ didn't finish the works on the cross. If 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 simply me taking scripture out. If you want to call it that as the scripture says you know taking taking um if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy right if it's simply taking it out and that can remove me from from salvation then christ's work is not finished it, 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 he, he didn't complete what he came to do right because the whole point is that nothing should be able to remove us from the position that we're in with god nothing is stronger than christ himself and I think that's that's the the, the the picture I want to put out to people to make them understand that the only person, who, the only there is nobody. Let me put it very frankly: there is nobody stronger than Christ. Not sin, not the devil, and not yourself that can take you from the from take you from the hands of God. And so when we have that position of understanding, then we can view Scripture in a different way because then we have to look at it as a okay. So we need to interpret it a little bit differently. Because again, if that scripture is saying that we can be removed from the position with God, um, then then why wouldn't why would we not open the doors for anything else removing us from that position from God's hand, right? And like I said, then that would then enable Christ to not be able to have completed the finished works. The whole point of Christ coming was to defeat sin, right? Yeah. So are we saying that Christ said, okay, I'm going to defeat sin, but I'm going to leave the one at the Revelation twenty two ninety. I'm going to leave it alone. And say, do you know what? That one though, that one is too strong. That one there is too heavy for me, even for you, right? It's very. And that's, that's what I was trying to think of, bro. It's the exact same situation when we say, um, if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, the only sin that can't be forgiven. And then someone will be like, someone will be like, see, there is a there is a sin that Jesus Christ cannot forgive. I told you, see, there's certain things that Jesus Christ can't do, but that's not what it was saying. There's yeah. actually a fuller understanding. First of all, first of all, someone to the Pharisees, um, and they were trying to say that his works that he was doing, they didn't believe it. They were attributing his works to oh. to devils. Go on, you, bro. Sorry, can you go back to that scripture again? Revelation twenty-two. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, I've got it, bro. Right in this book. Okay, because um, what I'm curious as well, because um, I'm, I'm looking at other translations here as well. Um, so, for example, the King James, I don't know which version. King James, you want to go King James? I want ESV, so let me go King James. Oh, okay, so the KJV says, If any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his power out of the book of life. It didn't say that the, because the, um, there's many books in the Bible. There's the book of life. There's um, the... The Book of the Dead. There, there's different books referring to different things, mm. um, which I think is vital. And he shall take his part out of the Book of Life. Well, God has a book of people, like a record of, of those who are alive, those who are dead. If you get killed, you will be taken out of the Book of Life. You will no longer cease to be living. You'll be, you're removed from it. Um, <clears throat> I'm just reading some of the things here. Um, I think the, the misunderstanding of it is you can look at it in many contexts. Um, you know, it, it's it's difficult because you, you literally have to do that. You literally have to say if it's because you get all sorts of ones. Well, the unforgivable sin or, or if you do this one. So it's either one, the other or we've got quite a few options to choose from. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'm just curious the book of life. What's the book of life? What does because in different books of the Bible, book of life meant different things. Mm. Um, you know, it talks about Ephesians that we've been uh, kept in the book from the foundation of the world. What book? <laughs> so book of life sometimes implies that it's people that are record um that are living um but obviously if you're if you're dead you're removed from that book because you're no longer alive uh and that's just another thing i've heard of people mention that as well but i don't think that's solid but just a thought that comes regarding them can, um, I, can i can i be honest do you know what yes, gabriel I would love to answer this question. Gabriel, so, by the way. Gabriel, Gabriel, I would love to answer this question. So, listen, hit me up. Let's talk. That's how I do it. Like, I don't, I don't have a full body of yeah. answer on this. So, I would, I would love to have a conversation with yourself, get your perspective, and let's, let's chop it up. I'll be honest with you, because I mean, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to go too deep. But from what I've read, it don't seem like that because of my pre position. But I would say, like, listen, let's, listen, hit me up. Let's, let's have that conversation outside as well. I don't mind, um, because as far as I'm concerned. Um, I need to, I always want to learn and I don't know everything. So um, mm -hmm. on that particular Revelation 22, I don't have a solid, solid answer to really break it down um, because I'm, I come with a structure around it. So I, I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm doing a good enough justice for your answer that you'd want. And I respect that as well. So hit me up. Let's, let's, let's chop it up. You know what I'm saying? Let's, let's get that question going in it. So, um, but I'll come back to that in a sec, Gabrielle. Appreciate that, bro. Um, Maria has a question. Says there have been times where I felt like I was, I was in a backsliding state because I was practicing sin. However, me, my, however, my belief in Christ never went away. Does that mean I didn't need to rededicate my life? I love this question. Love it. <laughs> love it. Um, sorry, do you want to? Do you want to go? So for me, um, in this particular question that Maria's put in here, um, I don't, I don't ever, I get the the sentiment behind rededicating the life right almost like for your mental um for your mental uh aspects you know um i i like that i love the fact that there's a a mental kind of shift you can make um is it necessarily a, a shift that needs to happen you need to rededicate your life in order to to be living correctly with god no because your position never changed um, I think I said to my other live the other time, I said, God doesn't move, okay? God doesn't move. He's in the same position as always, right? Uh, and our relationship in terms of our, uh, in terms of, like I say, um, how we hear God, how we see God can be affected by what we're doing because we're the ones affected. No, God is not changing though. He's still speaking loud. He's still waving his hands, but he's still shooting off guns. He's, do he's doing all those things that, bro, to get your attention. It's just you now are not paying as much attention. Do you know what I'm saying? So for, for, for you in that sense, it, nothing's actually changed really you are still in the same position that you have with god but i i get the psychological aspect in terms of like telling myself okay yes i'm going to i'm going to renew my i'm going to re, i'm going to i'm going to rededicate my life it's almost like a psychological thing uh you know like when you say uh, it's a new week it's a new me and let's go again right <laughs> it's, it's it's psychological it, it makes sense but it doesn't it doesn't rem it doesn't change your position in christ you are still in the same position with him um, so for me, you don't have to rededicate your life. You don't have to go back up to the altar again. You get don't have again, to yeah. get born again, again. You don't have to give your life again. You don't have to tell Jesus, um, I, uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm giving my life to you again. You don't have to say that, but I get the psychological aspect yeah. of you saying yeah. I'm rededicating my life or Lord, I want to start over again. Do you know what I'm saying? Even though you don't need to, because this is a question about, this is a question about repenting. Yeah. yeah. Must we repent again and again and again? in our salvational walk with Christ? I, I want to ask that question to you, bro. Um, well, I think just the first thing, and Marie, appreciate you sharing the honesty of your struggle. Um, backsliding, I hear that, that term a lot, but it's funny enough, it's only referred to an unbeliever in the Old Testament. You mm. never hear a Christian backsliding in the Bible, uh, or in the New Testament, because um, I was practicing sin. I don't think you, if you're a believer, you won't be practicing sin. You may be struggling with it, or you may have moments where you're full and you're trying to overcome. Um, so I wouldn't say you were practicing sin, um, but I would say that, yeah, like your brother said, you don't need to rededicate your life. Christ has, accept, has accepts you just the way you were with, within that struggle. Um, it's like the prodigal son, or in this case, prodigal daughter. Um, you know, you've come to like, hold on, what am I doing? Like, mm. I should do this. Come on, get back. You know, and his arms are always open. He's always embracing you. So, you know, just 
uh, COVID, I don't know where you are now with regards mm. to this question you asked, but one thing I would tell you is that God loves you yeah. and that he accepts you just the same. You're as holy as you were the day you got saved. You're as righteous as you were the day you got saved. Um, your actions don't determine your disposition towards the Father. The Father looks at you exactly the same way with a smile on his face and a joyful heart. So, yeah, be encouraged, sis. Mm. Um, I think the, the question you asked me, bro, about um, which part was you asking, sorry? First about time? repenting. Do we have to repent over and over again? Like when you sin and that, do you have to repent? <laughs> what, in your, for, to do what? To stay saved or what? Um, yeah, and I guess like to stay saved and stuff like that and et cetera, et cetera. Okay, I'll, I'll come with that one in a second, that question. Um, mm. Yeah, I don't think you have to keep repenting and repenting over and over again to get saved. Mm. I think you... you Ironically, you'll find note from what I remember, so don't quote me on this as gospel, but from what I remember, I don't see any example in the Bible of a, a Christian being told to repent after they got this saved. That's what I said. Um, there, there is passages before repenting to do what? To, to turn, to change your mind. And to, you know, the Bible talks about in Hebrews, turn from dead works and repent towards Christ. Mm. So you're repenting, you're changing your mind, you're trusting in this, now repent. And turn the other way and put your trust mm. in Christ. So it's repent of your sins. That doesn't mean stop sinning, because if that meant, because it's the Greek word metanoia, I think it is, mm. which means to change your mind. Mm. Uh, but unfortunately, later translations got changed to another repentance. I can't remember the Greek word, but it translated repentance as stop sinning. Mm. And if that would be the case, that you'd have to stop sinning before you get saved, you will never mm. get saved. So mm. it's that metanoia is every time. Ironically, if if repentance men every time in the bible to stop sinning then god repented more times in the bible than we did mm. he repented loads of times mm. what did god sin no no he changed his mind <laughs> he changed his mind he chose to work with the people he's working with he chose not to pour judgment instead chose mercy etc etc so yes there's a there's a thing as a christian we turn from trusting in these things and trusting in that would i say there's no key words repentance as a christian no but the renewing of the mind is being renewed of the mind, which you could say is a daily thing, a daily mm. repentance, yeah. but not this idea that if I don't stop sinning, if I don't turn from this sin, I'm going to be judged. Because when you accepted Christ, you've already been judged. So you have no fear of any punishment to come. You're good with Jesus. So, yeah, there's that hunger as a Christian that you want to turn from sin mm. because you know it's not, it's damaging you, it's damaging God, and it's hurting God, and it's hurting the people you're doing it against. But you're not doing it to stay saved. Yeah. Or, or hoping that if you don't do it, you're going to be in, in trouble. So yeah, that's yeah. My answer. I love that as well because I I, I think um, when it comes to the repentance, I, I, I said the exact same thing. I said when you look at the word, even even if you don't even go to Greek, if you keep it as English, the only time when you see it used repent, oftentimes it's associated with them talking to Jews to change their mind. Yeah. Like it was so when like for instance, uh, someone saying my act, I think it's Acts two verse thirty eight. Where yep. Peter's saying repent uh, and believe, and you and you shall be uh, you shall be saved, or whatever, right? And he's talking to Jews because they they know about God, they have some knowledge of God, right? But their their idea of who God is is like change your mind, because what they were seeing, they, they a lot of the Jews couldn't understand. It was like, well, this Jesus character, what's well, that's not what we understood. God, you know, what I'm saying yeah. that whole argument we have now, which is God is one. Da, 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 they were arguing the exact same things, right? And Peter's listen today. <laughs> y'all better repent okay change your mind right it's not to stop sinning the changing of your mind is to say it's to make like lord i'm changing my viewpoint to this i'm not i'm not thinking in that lane no more i'm not going to think in that way anymore because yeah. it's, the, it's the way that you think it's the way that you believe it's the way you're going to act you know what i'm saying so that's, that's why the, 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 the sin situation is why god is dealing with remember god is always dealing with the inside first for the outward so yes. when i act that's the outward you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> and I think I, I said this to these guys, I said this to these guys last week. I said to him, um, yeah. I was saying to him about the fact that sometimes we go ahead of God, right? You're, tr you're literally trying to change yourself. And it's a good thing to do, right? Um, and I was saying to him, listen, sometimes, you know, when you, were, when you first came to Christ, you might have thrown all the way, all the way your all secular music. And you just <laughs> threw it all away. You just threw it all away because you don't want to, you don't want nothing to do with it no more, right? And you, was, you, know, you don't want to hear anything about that. And then you realize quickly next week, I can't do this. 
right? You was going, you was going ahead of your time. You was going ahead of your time. Do you know what I mean? You were yeah. going ahead of God. You weren't letting God speak to you and reveal that to you, right? Mm -hmm. As much as it'll sound like a good idea, you probably heard a preacher say it. So you didn't, you didn't take time to let God speak to you about it and then bring change. Because when you try to change behaviorally, it doesn't last. Yeah. Because there needs to be a revelation. There needs to be a pulling of your uh, of the of the the blindness from your eyes to say, "Hey, that behavior isn't is not it's not good enough for you. It's not good enough for me. No, that's not what I want from you. I have I a standard for you." Oh, go sorry. For no, go for it, bro. Go for it. I think that's the difference between when the Bible talks about sins of omission and the sins of commission. Mm, that's why okay. you know what you're doing. Even David yeah. prayed and he said, "Lord, you know, forgive me of the sins I'm not even aware of." Mm. Uh, there's things that we're doing we don't think we're doing anything wrong but god is show, slowly revealing that to us mm. over time um but i think another key point as well just we use uh, acts 238 where you know it says repent and be baptized every one of you mm. the remission of your sins um remission to start again for your sins to be removed mm. uh, but the reason he told them to repent is because he just they just did a whole thing with stephen you stoned mm. him yeah. you crucified the messiah and they're like, oh, the prick to the heart. What do we do? Repent. Put your trust in Jesus. The one that you just rejected and crucified, now put your trust in him. He's the Messiah. And then they were pricked and then they, they repented and put their trust in Christ. So I think that that's a real a real key because it, it's it's having that understanding. I mean, I would study, say, guys, anyone who wants to do study of the word repent, study the word in repentance and look at the context because – Boy, yeah, <laughs> it's amazing yeah, exactly. what you see. When you realize that God has repented more times than he's required man to, it says a lot. Um, but yeah, um, we've got a, a statement here from the sister. Yeah, so the sister put a statement here. It says, guys, I really need your help. Someone asked me an embarrassing question and I lied that, that I lied then um, told, uh, oh, I lied then, and I, I lied God, that and told, basically told, told me, swear to God. And I did because I was embarrassed and I, I wasn't, I wasn't thinking straight. I've asked God to forgive me. Will he forgive me? It's another part of the question. Well, will God forgive say, this girl for lying? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the thing is, I mean, if you're, if you're a Christian, sis, then, you know, all the things you've ever done, you've already been forgiven for. Um, I think there's a difference between asking God for forgiveness and acknowledging he's done wrong. Mm. Because mm. I, I remember someone saying, when you ask God for forgiveness, it's almost insulting. Mm. It's like, my son. <laughs> I've already done this. I've already forgiven you. It's done. Mm. Oh, but forgive me. It's done. Okay, I'll give you my tithes and offerings. It's done. I'll do mm. this. It's done. <laughs> we keep looking to try and make amends with God, but the only thing that can make amends was that one sacrifice. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, if you've done it, you know, whoop, oh, God, I'm sorry about that. That's it done like god yeah. knows you know you don't have to ask him for forgiveness he's already done it it's just being able to say sorry god but then also receiving that love and knowing that lord you know that i was wrong in that sorry about that mm -hmm. not back yet. you know what i mean that, that's pretty much it um so yeah, yeah. you don't have to ask for forgiveness to get forgiven because you already are yeah I, I really and i really want to impress that on people's mind man that you listen look you 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 commit a sin <laughs> you are not out of the race my friend like it like it's not he's it's already been f i i i use, I use an example we always quote like um i think it's romans is it romans six or romans three i can't wait um, the wage of sin is death right romans three twenty three. romans three verse 23 where it says um you know the wages of sin is death uh, but a free gift of eternal life a free gift of christ is eternal life right so yeah. the the gift here is this christ paid let's i want to keep it very simple i'm gonna make it very basic Christ basically paid the credit card off forever, yeah. Because the credit card is, is, is keeps you in debt. So the the debt of uh, of of death, okay, <laughs> that was knocking at your door due to the sins you've been racking up, okay. Yeah, you've been racking up some bills on this credit card, okay, <laughs> right? Yeah, and and and. and plus you, interest. Yeah, with plus interest, and it's astronomical. You can You saw the bill and you said, "Whoa, I, I can't pay this off." And Christ said, listen, I am now paying this credit card, not for just today, but tomorrow and also the past. I kind of the wrong order, but you know what I mean, right? I've, I've paid it. I've paid this credit card off. It's unlimited max. Maybe, maybe some of us have never been blessed like that. That's why we don't know. We've never had an unlimited card before. We don't know what that exists. Yeah, we don't, we don't know that one. Christ did that spiritually for you and unlimited yep. maxed on the credit card and said, listen, due to the fact that sin just needs one thing. And then already death is collecting the payment at the door. 
I have come to destroy it. Not even pay it off, sorry. Pay it off is nice. I've destroyed it. So you can now do what? Cut up the credit card. It doesn't exist no more because uh, Def can't have no payments for you. <sighs> Go on, bro. Sorry, I'm just sorry. I'm just thinking about when even when Jesus says it is finished, it's the Greek yeah. word tesselai, which means paid in full. Mm. You know, bank account cleared. I mm. think you know what it is? I think theology, theologically up here, we believe Jesus has forgiven us. Mm. But down here we don't believe it. Yeah. And so it's getting this up here. Mm. what's already real here has to become here mm -hmm. you know like you, you even hear it in some other christian songs oh, i'm covered by the blood of jesus no you're yeah. not what do you mean no you're not mm. we're not old testament the old testament it's almost like oh yeah thank god he's paid for my sins now but when i get to judgment day i've got to give an account mm -hmm. no your sins are not covered they're removed mm -hmm. gone don't exist you're blameless that's what we were talking about earlier, like Judgment Day. I hear Christians say, oh, yeah, but he might say, depart from me. I'm like, bro, if you're not going to say anything about me, that, I'm blameless. Mm. I'm going to heaven. I'm walking right in. I'm like, yo, mm. that was happening. <laughs> mm. Because I'm not going with my own righteousness. I'm going with his perfection. And mm. I'm going right in. Because only perfect, perfect people can enter heaven. Um, mm. And Jesus has given us his perfection. Um Oh, how you doing? How you doing, bro? Um, this really comes down to free will. If you cannot wake away from God, then you are no longer free. Um, the prodigal son, uh, he walked away and he came back. Um, I think even, I always use this example of biologically, even as our own kids, even if our kids, we do something wrong, we let them down and like, no, nah, you're dead to me. Well, it may be dead to you, but they're still your child. And you're yeah, still the, the position still stands. It still stands. So whether you want stands. to not exceed their existence or whatever, they're still your your dad and still your son. Yeah. Any love, um, com like we were talking about earlier, you said about free will. Where mm. God is working according, working in you to do his will. Yeah. You're, 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 the odds of you running away from God. And mm. the thing is, even when I hear people say, oh, they departed from God, they departed from the faith. Sometimes that's interpreted. They left the church. <laughs> so mm -hmm. Yeah, that's basically what they meant. Yeah, it's not true. But th there's <laughs> this idea that oh, they backslidden. Oh, they're an atheist now, or or they may not may not even been Christians. Mm. But the point is key is that we don't know their story. Mm -hmm. We don't know what they're going through. They might have had a crisis of faith. They might have you know sinned so far they think they can't come to God, so they've just kind of gone off and done whatever. We don't know what's going on, but God does. Mm. And no matter what they do or want to walk away or leave or whatever, they are still God's son. Mm. And the thing is, even this idea of what you just said, bro, if you're going to walk away from God, then you're no longer free. Why would you want to walk away from God? That's the, okay, so that is the, that's what I was going to say. Go for it. Yeah, bro. As a child of God, why would you want to? And if Thank any, you. you'll be more scared to walk away from God than you would of trying to not be. Mm -hmm. You'll be too concerned that you will be like, no, I want to be with dad. I don't want to be away from dad. I want to be with him. Who walks away from a loving father? That's what yeah. I want to know. Yeah, Who I walks away from a loving father? That's what I want to know. one, yeah, you would. But like yeah. a loving one. A loving one, who does that? No one does. Because we, the way we're hardwired, nobody walks away. So even to say that the free will to do this, you wouldn't want to, number one. Number two, okay, your position is, is, is certified. Certified fight you understand yeah. so that 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 in itself it cannot be revoked number yeah. three it's god who's working in you to desire him this is this is the key part of it so you so this notion of free will also is, is also also very very tricky because it's yeah. like i always say what is free will is anybody really free right it, it, he put a little thing here about free will versus determinism i say is it really free when you came out the womb were you free did you choose where you were going to be born did you choose what time you'd be born? Did you choose a skin tone? Did you choose a nose? The notion of free will is 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 really, uh, I would say, uh, um, I would say the notion of free will is 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 partly true, but it doesn't go. It cannot be full. Uh, do you know what I'm saying? It, it cannot be to its fullest point because you did not self-determine. You cannot tell me where you were going to be born. You couldn't tell, choose what time. You couldn't choose your parents. You couldn't choose a skin tone. You couldn't choose any of those things. You were given a set of factors and entered into this life. You didn't choose your environment, how you grew up it chose you right <laughs> and and then you and then and then up into a certain age you've been colonialized you've been indoctrinated you have been taught 
and you will realize your choices in terms of what you like even is dictated by your environment and what you've come from so i like cocoa pops do i really like cocoa pops or is it because in my household there was cocoa pops <laughs> yeah do you see what i'm saying so is it really free will what you're what you're talking about is being able to make a choice but is it free will do you, I mean, what I'm saying? You, you can walk away from God, whatever that looks like. Yeah. I mean, Jonah, you can walk away Jonah from did. God, you're still with him. I mean, I always used to say his joke when people say, oh, no one can pluck me out of my father's hand. Yeah. Then Jesus says, no one can pluck you out of my hand. Well, mm. if, if, if that's before the cross and then Jesus dies and now you are the body of Christ, can the body of Christ be dismembered? Mm. If you're the body of Christ and you're connected to the head, if you could disconnect, you can disconnect from the head. Mm. And then we've got problems with the head dysfunctioning with the body. Mm. I mean, even that, even physically, you you have a certain ailment and something's gone or whatever. The head still works. The head's yep. still there, even though it's absent of the member. But in completion, the body needs to be complete. It's still connected to the head. Um. So the idea that you can break the body of Christ because you walked away. How does that? We hear that walk away from God. What they went into sin for a little while. They said, I'm no longer a believer, I don't believe in God and all that rubbish, blah, blah, blah. You know, I've heard many of stories, and I won't mention the person's name, um, but one person that you said that they, they kind of walked away, became an atheist, was brought up a Christian, gave the life of Jesus, and the person asked them about Jesus. And the statement was, I miss him. Well, if you're an atheist, you don't believe him. How can you miss someone you never encountered? Mm. I miss him. You've got motions, I miss him. I'm like, come back. He misses you too. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But yeah, man. Yeah. I, 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 again, as well, um, without going too deep about it. So um, someone did ask a question, I think it was, and I'll, I'll say it to you. The question was about, they wanted to know your interpretation of Philippians 2. I've got the scripture up here. Um, you know what it is. They want to know, they want to know, uh, they want to know, um, uh, what your definition is of uh, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Um, well, let's go to the verse before. Okay. <laughs> um, so that's, if you go to, uh, I think just verse 12 in itself, right? Mm. So, therefore, beloved, so children of God, as you have always obeyed, that's key, mm -hmm. not only in my presence, mm -hmm. but much more in my absence. Wait, just stop there. Mm. He's telling them, work out your salvation, well, not just in my presence, because we, we all know we can be Christian when we're around Christian. Mm -hmm. We can act like Christ and be loving and all, you know, all goody goody. But when we're around non Christians, how do we behave? So there's this sense of reverence, right? Work out your salvation. Notice he didn't say work for your salvation. Mm. Work out. For something to be out, it has to be in. To get it out, it's got to be from within, right? Come on now. Work out your salvation with fear mm. and trembling. Mm -hmm. Now the word fear, I'm trembling. I don't. I would say it's more reverence, not like oh, I need to make sure I'm doing the right thing because I wasn't going to be damned. No, it's it's oh, it's reverence. Like even when the apostle, like for, if you're writing to the apostle and the apostle yeah. Paul's writing to the, the Roman, um, the uh, Philippians, right? Mm. Whether I'm about or I'm not, work out your own, own salvation with fear and trembling. Mm. Whether I'm present or not, still keep yep. doing what you're doing. Keep yep. obeying whether I'm around or not. You know, some of us in our in churches, we can be all trying to be Christ-like when we're around our pastor, mm. you know, or around whoever the leaders are. It's easy to try and be spiritual around them. But when we're not around them, do we act the same way? Mm. Or do we live before the audience of one? Mm. Because if we're living before the audience of one, well, our life will match whether we're around people or not. We'll be consistent. Okay. I'm not saying we're always perfect, we'll make mistakes, you know. But that, that's my understanding. But the key point is the next verse, which people don't put in. Yeah, so yeah. It's God who works in you. Mm -hmm. Work out your salvation. God's doing the work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. God's the one working in you to bring that reverence, that honor and respect. And, and what's been put in you, which is Christ's DNA, mm. his new heart, you know, his desires. It's been worked out in you to become fruit. Mm. And that's what's going to come out of you. But you do it with reverence. Mm. Whether people are around or not, you do it because you love God and because it's him doing it in you. It's not about mm. you. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I'm hearing that. I'm hearing that. I'm hearing that. I love that. 
Uh, and uh, yeah, I won't go to because I've really, I think I've spoken on that topic uh, enough as well. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I definitely, um, yeah, definitely, definitely will leave that part of it as well. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, yeah, so I think um, in regards to the situation as well, I know we we could go deeper, we could even go into more scripture as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think for I'm trying to see if there's any more questions so I can add and and and, and so we can discuss it. Um, you, so that yeah, go for it, bro. Go for oh, it. Sorry, no. Would you like me to mention those points that I think may be a stumbling block? Yeah, yeah, go for it, man. Go for it. Um, points, so I I read nine points that I think are a stumbling block from people okay. that struggle with once saved, always saved doctrine mm. uh, or this belief of once saved, always saved. One self righteousness. By the way, I'm just going to read them out yeah. by, as points, and then if you want to tackle any of them, you want to welcome. So one is self righteousness. Mm -hmm. Two is legalism. Mm -hmm. Three is fear. Mm -hmm. Four unbelief. Mm -hmm. Five is moral failure. Mm -hmm. Six is false understanding of scriptures. Mm -hmm. Seven false dreams and visions. Mm -hmm. Eight is Old Testament usage, mm -hmm. and nine is misidentity. Mm -hmm. There's a mm. lot there, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's deep. It's deep. It's deep. I, I think they are fundamental. In every one of them, someone along the line, whenever I talk to them, there's always one of these that they are just a stumbling block for them. Mm. Mm. There's a one you want to tackle, bro. Boy. <laughs> I'm not sure, bro. We've can, we can got time to tackle one in it, so hit one. Let's tackle one. We've got about 15 minutes. Less than 15, okay. got 10 minutes left, got 10 minutes left. Okay, so, cool. 10 minutes left, guys, for you guys, yeah. Cool. Um, so one of the things that I used to struggle with was the false mm -hmm. understanding of Scripture. <clears throat> I think the, there's two, actually. I probably might be able to tackle two. Um, one is the false understanding of Scripture. A lot of the Scriptures we tend to go to in the New Testament to try and say, oh, look, see, it says here we can do salvation. Uh, what we tend to do is like what we've been doing, not reading the verse before and afterwards and looking at the context. Because mm. a lot of the times when you get the context in, in, in match, it, oh, actually, it's not saying that, you know. Mm. Um, great one example. Matthew 7 is a favorite one Christians like to use. You know, many on that day will say, Lord, Lord, you know, I prophesied in your name. I cast out demons. I healed the sick, raised the dead, all that. But I never knew you. Mm. Apart from me, you work of iniquity. Now we have a problem. One, on judgment day, first is not talking to Christians because the church mm. didn't exist yet. That's one. Two, every day, everyone on that day will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Three, what did they come to mm. Jesus with? Look at all the good I did. It's mm. all good works, prophesying, healing the sick, raising nothing problem. It's all good. Mm. And then Jesus says, depart from me. You didn't do the will of my father. What's the will of the father? To believe on Jesus. They're looking at all what the works they're doing. Mm. All the works that they're doing. And being able to do that and say, look, oh, uh, this is proof that I'm yours. Mm. But that's what the Old Testament prophets did. They thought they were God, big, uh, gods because they did miracles and stuff. But that mm. didn't determine if they were his or not. Mm. And he says, I never knew you. Not like, well, I did know you, but you kind of flipped up. So, mm. <laughs> you know. Um, so, oh, definitely have a look at that. Um, so I think that's that's a key point to highlight. Mm. Um, do you want me to handle this comment here and then? You go for it, yeah, you go for it, yeah. It's a good comment. I liked it. He said uh, that preservation of saints may be a better way of saying it. I like it. Okay. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. The terminology may confuse people. Perseverance of the saints may be a better way of saying it. Okay. Yeah, um, Yeah. I think, well, that could also come down to the theology of what perseverance of the saints is. Because mm. I think there's some that say, well, if you per persevere to the end, then you know if you're truly saved. Mm. And if you don't endure, then you weren't his to begin with. Mm. And I think there's a dichotomy of not knowing that it's God who is the one who started it and will finish. Mm -hmm. It's not about you trying to endure. Yeah, it's Him that's doing the enduring. Um, and 
and no no one is going to match perfection until jesus yeah. returns so every single one of us as christians are going to be a more of a more of a maturity than others mm. but we're never going to be fully yeah complete until he returns so i think the, uh, the the concern i have with the perseverance of the saints is it becomes about you again it becomes about look at what i'm doing i'm enduring i'm still doing this i'm still on this walk i'm i'm not stopped i'm still reading my bible i'm still you know what i mean it focuses on you rather than him doing the, the guarantee that whatever happens no matter where you are in your journey you're still good and you're, you're perfect and blameless and you're going home if that makes sense mm. um so i think that's the only problem i have with that is that it's this kind of consciousness of making sure that i need to prove myself that i am his um mm. and that can be a burden um yeah. Yeah, the last there's, one a, there's, I there's a conversation in the chat right now about asking for forgiveness. I think you might want to hit it this last few minutes because I think it's very good to to clarify okay. what we're what we're meaning. Um, yeah, so um, it's just obviously, uh, but but you do ask for forgiveness in relationship though. It doesn't keep the relationship, but you ask for forgiveness. Okay, I have a deeper stu deeper study. I'm a bit unsettled with that. So what's happening is there's a conversation in the chat that's talking about do we have to ask for forgiveness in our in in our walk with God um do we have to ask for forgiveness i think it's very similar to the repent thing but yeah we wanted to, to kind of okay. that. so what i would say with that is that you're not you're not asking god for forgiveness to get forgiven yeah you're you're coming to him with it not even that you've messed up but you've done yeah. wrong um and you're asking him to help you to repent to change from that wrong mm. uh it's, it's, it's the same example in um so if we just if we compare uh the Sermon on the Mount, which yeah. I understand is before the cross, so yeah. old covenant, right? So before the new covenant, Jesus prayed, we pray the Lord's Prayer, where it says, you know, have a father forgive us as we forgive others. Mm. So basically, the forgiveness is saying, you know, we will only be granted the forgiveness that we dish out to others. So mm. if we don't dish out to the forgiveness, God's not going to give us forgiveness. So it's a law based forgiveness, mm. right? Whereas a new covenant basis, I think it's in Colossians, where Paul says, forgive others as God in Christ forgave you. Mm -hmm. So you don't forgive others because you are oh, something as a Christian I'm meant to do. Yeah. You do it because you are forgiven. Yeah. Present tense. But it's the same way when you have a relationship. I'm not saying in, in that relationship, because we're all good with God, there's no beef on his end. Mm. But humanly relationships, yeah, we have, if we've done something wrong, we'll say, oh, you know, I'm sorry. That wasn't right forgive me for that that mm. can we work on it and that can i help to you know work this out and make peace and kind of deal with mm. the situation um and show genuineness of wanting to change and repent mm. and apology but there's different types of people that repent and forgive in different ways mm. some people say i'm sorry that's enough for them mm -hmm. some people i have to prove that i you know, improve my trust other things it's all different i'll give you a gift that makes them appreciate the do you know what I mean? so there's different ways people deal with apologies and forgiveness Mm -hmm. um so that's what i would say according to god um you're not asking for forgiveness to get forgiven yeah. you're just acknowledging that you are forgiven and receiving yeah. that grace and love whereas mm -hmm. human human relationship you do ask for forgiveness and try and make amends and build that relationship mm -hmm. um, where god that can't be broken whereas humans it can be yeah and i think <clears throat> so i so the notion of obviously um asking forgiveness i totally get it because humanly that's how we understand our relationships to be um yeah. forgive me you know i've done wrong because we don't <laughs> because that's how we humanly relate right so i'll oh, forgive me i've done wrong um and there's nothing wrong with you saying forgive me lord that i know i've done wrong um it's just that we're trying to get the mindset of that you're not asking for forgiveness to be forgiven yeah. like you are already forgiven you actually have been forgiven not at the point you even were even repenting at that moment you had been forgiven before you repenting. And I think that's what's very hard about it because yeah. we're humanizing God in the aspect of our relationships because in human relations, you get forgiven when you ask for forgiveness. You know what I'm saying? Like it's very rare you meet a man or a friend who has forgiven you before you've even, you know, if you've done a major crime to them that they forgive you before you've asked for forgiveness. You know what I mean? So I think sometimes what happens is our mindset tries to put tries to get God to be seen the same way but it's a what, what we need to understand is that in the works of Christ it was a sky package deal yeah so there was a <laughs> lot of things that were going on in this package deal <clears throat> and in that package deal one of the things he did was like listen your sins are done 
I've destroyed it. Your sin, so I say your sin. We're not confused. If you say sins, it's going to be another term. This, <laughs> I've destroyed sin. Okay, so now when you decide to do wrong and transgress the law of God, if you want to call it that, and you decide to uh, disobey or you decide to willfully go out there and do some madness, okay, Christ is like, I've already paid for that price already. When you're coming to me, it's actually really interesting because very, this is, this is the prodigal son situation where the prodigal son came, all right, and I can't remember the scripture. Does he say, does he say, forgive me, father? I don't know if he says, forgive me. No, he doesn't get time to. That's the point. He's because like, oh, the, I want to say sorry. I will choose to be a slave. And, you don't even get choose, and then he said, listen, no, 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 no. Come on. Don't worry about that. Because the importance was not him saying sorry. Exactly. As soon as the father saw him from afar, he said straight away, he started telling the servants, my friends, come on, get the things ready. My son is coming home. There was no a question of son. Now bow down and, and say you want me to forgive you because he had already done that beforehand. And that's the way God works with us. It's like before you even get to the part where you're like, <sighs> God, I'm so sorry. I've done it again. He's Before already... you got to that point, he's already said, he, he's already done. Son, lift your head up. I've forgiven <laughs> it. Like, come on, let's let's like I'm already I'm ready to go with you again. You know what I mean? But humanly, because we understand our relationships with other human beings, where it's like you have to forgive to move forward. God is like I'm not operating on that frequency with you, right? Yeah. This is why I'm at. This is why I am who I am, and this is why who you are who you are. Because yeah. my ways are not your ways. So now, when you're going to God, when I, like, for instance, if I make, if I do some dumb stuff, right? If I do some dumb stuff, let's let's use a, a nice one, fornication, because that's that's one that I think our generation knows best. You fornicate. Yeah, and you fornicated, not even just fornicate, you fornicated, you did one or two, three, four, you did five, you even did a sixth one. Yeah, and then and even on the sixth one, you went to your bedroom and said, God, forgive me. And you went for a seventh one. Yeah, even when you did that, there is there's there is no need for you to go there and say, God, forgive me, please. And, but you do that out of relation. Like, in a sense, I think even you saying forgive me is for you, not for God. Yeah. And the reason why I say that is because for your mental aspect of the way that you think about relationships, it's for you, not for God. That when you say forgive me, it makes you feel like you're repent. It makes you feel like you're turning away from what you were doing. You know what I'm saying? It makes you feel like, oh, I've 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 changed my viewpoint. Really, so even your uh, forgive me, Lord. Really, it's not repentance if you want to call it that. If if you want to call it that, a after time you're saying sorry that you know you've done bad, but you're not repenting. Your mind hasn't changed. You haven't renewed it in that area. You, you, you know what I'm saying? You feel bad because you've done some bad things, but sometimes we haven't even renewed our mind in that area. Really and truly, we haven't. We know it's wrong, um, but yeah, the f we don't do it to, 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 to establish our position with God. We don't do it to still be a son. We do it normally because we think we, we, that's how we feel to do it. Like that's how humans relate to one another. And we think that how God does it. Yeah, so. I, I think it's key that one mentioned, mentioned earlier, the person who has unforgiveness or lives in unforgiveness, or what have you, the only prisoner is you. Mm. Um, and I think the idea, a lot of the times, the reason we confess to God and ask for forgiveness is because we want to relieve our conscience. Because our conscience is pricking us for the guilt and shame that we feel. And I think getting that transaction, I think it says in Hebrew, is that it is the blood of Jesus that cleanses us, purifies our conscience. So when we realize that Jesus has dealt with it, there's something that the healing that comes when you come boldly to God in the midst of that guilt and say god you know i'm feeling this way but i know you are cool with me please deal with that and he removes that guilt and that shame is gone because he doesn't have that towards mm -hmm. you um and that's really hard it's the same way with salvation mm. the ones they've always saved the idea of of all you're telling me i've got to do is put my faith and put my trust in jesus that's it come on now nah, what what do i have to do no no that's it put your faith and trust in jesus you know repent put your trust in him and and receive him accept him that's it nah 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 fam, fam like what, what what's the what's the a b c d it hurts our pride mm. we've got to be a part of something the this is the point this and is the point is, even the idea that you know uh, we are saved by grace through faith not of works at least any man could boast if it was about you living good behavior after mm. you got saved guess what when you get to heaven you can boast mm-hmm <laughs> You could boast. Look how good I lived as a Christian. I was a proper mm. Christian. Look how moral I was. Mm. So, you know, there's a lot of atheists and unbelievers that are in other faiths that live much more moral lives. Than most us. <laughs> it's it's that concept of oh well, if I live morally upright, that proves I'm righteous. Have you seen the Old Testament saints? Mm. Abraham, David, Lot. 
Bible calls him righteous. You know what he was doing with his daughter? <laughs> so there, there's things like this. You see the most humane acts, and yet God, because they believed, were declared righteous, even though the stuff that they did. Same with the Corinthians. They're fornicating, drunkenness, all sorts, and God calls them saints. Mm. It don't compute because our religion glasses always wants to look at behavior mm. to prove identity rather than we do behave up from our identity. Mm. When we know yeah. we're only righteous, we will choose to think that way, we will live that way. But the moment we think, oh, I'm wicked, I'm evil, you know, I'm, I'm wretched, like a worm, when sin comes knocking, that's all you're going to say hello to. Mm. And that's the and that's the key point thing. I, I want to make it very clear. So we're ending on this kind of note. So I want to make it very clear to you guys. Like, look, I know it's hard. I understand to to have this thought process because it's like we understand abuse. Yeah. This is this is why we're looking at God some way. We, we yeah. just, we, if you're on my channel, you know we we did marry at first sight. We talked about abuse and, and we talked about relationship abusive relationships, and it's like we see we see it as oh um you know if if it, you know repentance is 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 a is a part and parcel of of salvation and i'm trying to tell you listen it's not and not in that regard that we see it in anyway not in the regard that we see it in so when i say about repentance i'm talking about the fact that first of all we talk about salvation itself it was talking about people who knew of god and repent change your mind i i noticed that paul never really spoke about repentance to the to the gentiles because they didn't have no clue who god was <laughs> like you need to get god <laughs> there's nothing to change you need to get him <laughs> do you know what i mean <laughs> you need yeah. to get god you know what i'm saying um yeah. and so those of you who have a relationship with god i know it's hard right i know it's difficult because it's like we're saying okay so for instance i can say a wild thing and i might say listen if you continue in sin it doesn't change your you know your 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 position in christ if you continue sinning, it doesn't change the position in Christ. But it sounds mad because it's like, that's if, and especially, and let me, I want to put it this way as well, especially the ones where I would say that you're extremely conscious of doing it. Yeah, I want to touch that one for you. Because some of you, 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 I know, yeah. Am I saying go out there and sin? This is what Paul said. That's not what he said. That's not what he's saying. What he's saying though is that, uh, and when he said about a great, as, as sin abounds, so does grace. He wasn't saying go out there and sin the more. You know what I'm saying? What we're saying is, you see, this is this is the understanding that when the love comes to you and you understand the love and you begin to deep the love and it seeps from just head knowledge going into the heart aspect, the body begin the body, the mind, the soul, the spirit, it's all in alignment and begins to go where God wants it to go. Do you yeah. feel what I'm saying? We're on a journey and we're trying to become more like his son. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I, I'm, I know it sounds the maddest, do you know what I'm saying? And, it, and it's hot to, for a lot of people because they might think that we're, we're preaching some heresy. But what we're trying to get you to understand is understand what Christ did. Yeah. Then understand who's inside of you. Jesus said, I'm going to make my abode of you, the Father and the Holy Spirit. They are all biding in you, working, willing for you to desire more of him. You understand? Yeah. Um, and so the, this this journey we're on was, as Christians, we're in a sanctification process. Yeah. Do you see know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I I I would say this as well. You know, as you know as well, uh, Kyle, you mm -hmm. can sit with scripture, a particular scripture, for days, yeah. weeks, <laughs> months, and then one day, boom, it makes sense. Now you are trying your hardest to understand the scripture for time reading 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 materials and it was still not getting you weren't getting a revelation then one day the doors open what am i saying to you uh, you may listen sometimes the, uh, god god is taking you for a process it, you know what i'm saying like we've we've got to allow god to maneuver us to a place it wasn't peter that was searching after god that god revealed that it's jesus christ is the son of the living christ it was god the father that revealed it to him so yeah we can go deeper another time but bro listen um yeah oh no just if i can just use one verse for example of that uh yeah, yeah go for it is um i remember hearing a lot of christians talk about oh judgment day i'm scared like oh i hope i do right um there was a first scripture in first john 4 i believe first one too and it talks about you know those who fear the day of judgment have not been perfected in love mm. when you're perfected in love and you know you're accepted judgment day is not anything you fear Mm. second coming jesus is going to come back 
But I think it's Hebrews 9, 28. I think it says, you know, when Jesus returns a second time, he's not coming for judgment. He's coming to get those he's redeemed, mm -hmm. those of salvation. It's an exciting thing as Christians. If you're confident and you know who you are and whose you are and everything is cool with you, it should be exciting that Jesus is coming to get us. Not a, a scary thing. For unbelievers, yes. But for Christians, it should be exciting. Mm. Amen. Yeah, be Amen. encouraged, guys. I just want to say with a comment on what Kojo has been mentioning, we haven't got all this together. Yeah. We don't always get this right. I don't want this to come across in this video and think, oh, these guys are all collected. Nah, mate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all the working journey. We all have these problems and we have struggles and we make mistakes. We choose to sin on time to time. We shouldn't, but we're growing. Um, but we continually keep having to renew our minds and know the love of God and how much he loves us. And as we all continue to learn that, God will give us the grace and the power to turn from sin and to know him and how much he loves us. Amen. Guys, it's been good. I know the chat's in there. It's powerful. I know the chat's in there. There's likes. There's, there's disagreements. There's agreements. There's there's indecision there. But listen, it's been all love, man. Um, we appreciate you guys coming through. We'll be here next fr uh, next Monday. I think I have someone on. I do have someone on. And we're talking about faith, I believe. I'll double check and make sure. You guys will see the poster in the middle of the week. Carl, we'll, we'll link up again. We'll get another day to, to do this again and, and go for another topic as well. Um, but guys, continue, man. Loving God, continue yes. renewing your mind, okay? Read that word, okay? Right now, I'm about to sign off and watch Meghan and Harry interview, okay? And you guys are going to see me in a few hours' time. You're all going to see me in a few hours' time, okay? So we appreciate you guys. Oh, do us a fa do me a favor. Guys, make sure you follow and like and share and subscribe the YouTube channel Pray Like You're Mad, okay? Cuz this is this is a, uh, you know, um this is this is for this is for uh, 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 um you know, I know I know we've got my little black book on, but um, I, I, I'm not saving this live on Little Black Book. I save it on to Pray Like Your Mad channel. So uh, you won't see this link on here. You'll see it on the Pray Like Your Mad channel. So if you want to watch it again, you go, you like, you share, subscribe on to Pray Like Your Mad channel. Kyle, where can they find you as well? Uh, you can see me on YouTube on RFS Tables, which stands for Rock Flip Shaking Tables. Um, you can check me out on your YouTube channel there. Where I've done a couple of other talks as well. Uh, you also see me on Facebook, uh, my first and last name, I think it's up there. Um, yeah, you can sign me on Facebook, you can add me there, message me on Insta, same name. Um, yeah, so check it out. And please, if you do see my YouTube channel, do like, share, comment, subscribe as well. Um, it'd be great for you to uh, bring any suggestions or questions. Beautiful. I'll tell you what we're going to do because I'm seeing that some people are still sorting questions. Guys, what I want you to do, guys, if you have questions, I want you guys to email myself because what we're going to do, we're going to put it all together and we're going to bring a live together, a QA where we're going to answer all the questions, right? So if you have questions, if you have questions, then I'm going to need you to email me, okay, at lbb91talks um at gmail.com i'm gonna have to make a new gmail for my other channel to this it's, i've just been ill prepared but yeah please do email uh myself and what i'll do me and carl will come back again and we'll discuss it and, and get and get deeper for you guys because i want to answer all the questions that you guys have do you understand yeah um so yes we're gonna have um we're gonna have a, a live on this so send us your questions on that email and we'll get it going as frank samoa said do more of this and reduce romantic stuff frank let me tell you something i will never stop the romantic stuff you understand yeah because god is a romantic himself you understand and so am i but yes i appreciate it guys uh <laughs> make sure you like share subscribe <laughs> you click on that bell button as well guys we appreciate you we're gonna see you soon for now it's megan and harry you understand it's megan and harry you understand appreciate it guys <laughs>